Hello, Plant Peoples, aka. Oh, <laughs> pee pee. <laughs> my line. <laughs> Hello, pee pees, aka Plant Peoples. Welcome back to my channel. Those who are new, welcome, welcome. Otherwise, if you have been here before, I welcome you back and thank you for your continual support. Today, I'm going to do a video on propagation. I'm going to be making cuttings on some of the plants that I do have. There may or may not be certain plants that I don't have on hand, but I'll also go over how to propagate them. I'm also gonna go over what kind of substrate you can root your uh, cuttings in. It's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put it in the comment box down below. Otherwise, let's get started. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. All right, so. The first plant I want to show you is actually my Mandula Pothos. It's, um, I have done a repot video of this and I stuck it on a new pole. Uh, this is probably not the best pole I've made because it actually uses a lot, a lot of moss and the roots have like grown into it so it's kind of crazy. So I think I have to just commit to this but it's growing quite tall. I careful do not fall I am balancing on my foot I have this one that's super high now and I just don't have the moss to um, propagate it oh my god I'm gonna fall over um, but I'm gonna make a cutting of this I'm gonna give some to my friend because he's starting to get into the plant hobby and yeah so this is my mandula pothos that I will be cutting first just wanted to show you a quick pan before I start cutting into this plant Okay, before I chop this one, I wanted to show you this. So you see how I've actually cut um, one more time on the stem? That's because I made a cut, um, where did I make a cut? I made a cut somewhere on this plant. Oh, okay, yeah. So it was this stem, I believe. Uh, was it? Oh my gosh, I don't remember. But anyways, uh, there was a lot of green variegation on the auxiliary bud. So when I cut it, it actually grew a green vine instead. And all I've been getting is green leaves. So this one is this one. Um, this one here. This one here, like it has not grown any variegation on its leaves. So what I'm gonna do is make sure when I cut this uh, long one here, I'm gonna cut it where there is a lot of variegation on the stem, which is totally fine because this is like a half and half um, sort of thing. So you can actually see the auxiliary bud. Uh, this little green dot here is where the new growth is going to start. A lot of the times with potos, they're kind of like stuck in between the leaf, but with this one, you can see that it is um, exposed. So technically cutting here where my two fingers are is a good place, um, but I am going to cut this down a little further down. Uh, let me see here. This one is not bad either. And same with this one. So I think, I think I'm gonna cut here on this one. Okay, so before you cut into your plant, you want to make sure you sterilize your scissors. I have an alcohol swab here and I'm just going to clean my dirty shears. I went on a cutting frenzy, so um, yeah, that's why they're kind of dirty. But anyways, uh, once they're clean, you can get snipping. And so, sorry, bumped it into the camera here. Oh, keep bumping into the camera. So just going to look for the auxiliary bud again. Um, so this one is okay. Uh, I think we talked about this one here. Now cutting one auxiliary or cutting one stem might actually stimulate growth on uh, multiple nodes. So I will show you an example. Anyways, for this one, you want to cut it he around here. So that way you, if this tip is going to rot, it has places to rot and it won't rot up to the um, node here but because this is a top cutting it I well hold on let me re-angle this all right sorry about that um so because this is now considered a top cutting if I left it like this this leaf here um should be 
growing about the same size, um, continuing from the bottom leaf. However, uh, when it comes to propagation, if there is a new leaf coming like this, technically it's best to leave it until this has fully unfurled, just because you could stunt the growth of it or it could abort. Um, so yeah, uh, this would be a top cutting. And if I were to cut it down, so let's see here. I'm looking at, these are like all aerial roots. It's kind of nasty, like look at that. Um, let's do, I'm gonna cut it up several times so my friend can have a more bushier. So I'm gonna cut again here. And so this would be called butterflying. All right, so now this one would be also a mid cut because it's not rooted. Um, if this was rooted into a substrate, this would technically be the bottom cut. This one would be a mid cut. Um, these mid cuts and bottom cuts are usually cheaper. Uh, the mid cut would be the cheapest because you would have to root it and also um, the leaves would basically start um, from baby again. So that being said, going back towards that cut that I had, which had a lot of, or basically reverted back, I think when you're making that cut, you want to make sure that there's not too much green on it. I think that's how plants end up reverting. I don't know, that's my guess. I could be wrong. Yeah, disclaimer, I'm not a botanist or anything. So yeah, um, so once you've made your cut, you can dip it in a rooting hormone. I just have a rooting hormone mixed with some cinnamon and some sulfur powder here. Actually, I don't know how if I have sulfur powder, but it'll just stop any bacteria growth and then at the same time, it'll help callus the tips, um, the cut tips that you had. You could dip it on both sides if you want. I usually just do the one side. Uh, this one I might, yeah, I'll just do it on one side here. So yeah, that's pretty much what you want to do. Um, I do it with every cutting. I dip it into this concoction here. Yeah, that's pretty much um, for my pothos. Earlier I talked about um, different nodes being activated at once once you cut something. This is my Japanese uh, global pothos. And so this was actually a plant that I got with a mid cutting. So, uh, so I got the plant as this. It was a very small leaf. I don't think that leaf is around anymore, um, but this could be the second leaf that it gave me. Anyways, that plant grew into this. A one single cutting grew into this, but I did cut it aggressively and I'll show you. So once it had like three or four leaves, I decided to cut it and it pretty much, I wonder how close I can get, yeah. So you can see that there are a lot of cuts made like here, here, um, here, but it activated like four growth points. And so that's why I have more than one vine going on. I have two coming out of this one. So I kept two and then I also kept cutting it further down. You can see that I've sliced it. Um, I did it with my other cuttings too. So this other one here I've cut as well. So basically when you want a plant to grow bushy, you're gonna have to cut it aggressively. So that would be something that you would wanna do with the philodendron micans to grow like a bushier plant. Versus like if I just had one growing and I never cut it, it would just be like this one single thing here like this. Not saying that like it's not beautiful or anything, but it's just, it's nicer when <laughs> you have a big pot like this. I hope that makes sense. Here are some cuts of my global, my Japanese global green, um, uh, green Japanese global pothos. So this one is a mid cut. Um, this one actually was part of, a, I think one of 
one or the other here but he it started to root as well so i just took my scissors and i cut it and then i just moved it over but they are rooting in pawn and so these two are two top cuttings and once they're big enough and more mature i i might start a new um like a new pot or i'll just stick it back into the pot of the mother plant I was originally going to chop my um, Monstera elbow back because I can't keep up with this moss pole anymore. It's very long, um, but I decided not to because now it's gotten to the point where it's producing another leaf, which I am quite shocked. So I'm just going to keep extending this pole, unfortunately. Um, and then hopefully this leaf will like turn back facing the sun. I don't know why it's facing the wall, but yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. But anyways, a top cut would be this right here. You see the V? So basically what you wanna do is you either air layer this and air root it in like moss, or you can actually just chop it and stick it in water and you'll get some nice water roots. Um, but yes, uh, Usually with the top cuttings, the leaves will continue to grow its regular size as long as it's, it's well rooted already before you cut it. Sometimes if you cut it, the leaf might be a little bit stunted. And also you don't want to cut if there is a new leaf on its way, which is why I'm not cutting this today. So yeah, I'm just going to extend it and then hopefully I'll, it'll just grow roots into the moss hole. I'm really bad with keeping these moist, so yeah i'm gonna try a different way um but yeah so i'm just gonna go ahead and wrap that and then maybe we'll cut it another day and i'll do a separate video for that all right so the next one i want to go through are hoyas propagating hoyas um so hoyas they, they have a lot of uh, they're like a vining plant a lot, most of them and so basically i have one here and you see these little dots here those are where the roots will come it's really easy to propagate these uh the new leaves will come out in between the two leaves here so you can actually cut anywhere along the vine so like if i were to propagate this one i would just like cut it here and then just stick this whole um uh, internode here into water and it would start rooting i have a hoya linearis linearis I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, I think this is dead at the bottom here, but I, I'm still trying to root it. But you can see little two white um, roots there. There are roots here as well. I'm sorry for my dry hands, but those are the places where you can uh, root. You can air root it not air rooted but you can just put it on a substrate and root it that way or you can water root it like I've been and pretty much you'll, that's how you're gonna um, get a fuller pot of this plant. So another example this is my Hoya Serpens. I actually got this as a one single um, cutting. I think it had maybe five leaves on it and what I did was I cut it in half I just put it on top of my pond and I saran wrapped the whole thing so that it was nice and moist and then it started to root into the substrate. You can kind of see it's very like surface still. Um, I might have filled it with pond actually to cover it up but yeah that will also stimulate growth and so now I have like two vines going growing instead of one. Obviously when this plant gets bigger I'm just going to snip it again here. Uh, or anywhere between the leaves and then I'm going to do the rooting process again so I get like a nice like trailing um, Hoya serpents here. Okay next one here is my booby plant. Um, not all cacti will uh, be propagated this way. Um, some of them will be done through their own leaf so like the donkey tail that one would be um, so yeah, but this one in particular, you would just cut it in half like I cross-sectioned it and then it, it is rooted, I can tell you that because I recently dropped this one and it was rooted and there's a gnat. Oh, my bird. Oh, they were back. One less gnat equals 200 less if you didn't see my last video on my gnat control. Anyways, um, I rooted these two and basically... This one here is the mother plant, okay? 
to do this without dropping. This is the mother plant, um, so I actually cut it up into three. And once you cut the mother plant, or this one here, once it gets more mature, it should grow another booby plant. How cute is that? It is so cute. Um, basically, it grows one out of uh, one of these tits. But yeah, it's really easy, this plant, if um, you want one, I really highly recommend it. It's really easy to root and really low maintenance. Alright, so the next one I want to show you is my Alocasia Mellow. I'm sorry for the angle. Um, I've repotted this recently, uh, actually not too recent, maybe like two months ago. It is in a no drainage um, passive hydro and it is 11 pond life. Um, so after I repotted it, I went on a corn harvesting frenzy and not too long after, I noticed these guys popping up. So these are corms and um, yeah, it's an alocasia's defensive mechanism. Um, it thinks it's dying, so it'll, it'll have all these corms, so yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these and then I'll show you how I propagate them. I know it's so weird to see these like out. Like you don't usually see these out on the surface. Like they're they're usually in in the soil. So so yeah um, yeah that's pretty much it. Um, so now those are cut off, and then I'm gonna show you how I grow these. All right. So a lot of the times these are found in the soil and they have a little husk on them, but uh, these ones don't. So I'm pretty sure they're still viable. Um, but yeah, if they are covered in husk, I, I recommend you to peel them off before you stick them into the uh, propagating substrate, um, just because I think they grow better, but if not, that's fine. I've grown them without. Uh, so basically, I have a prop box here. It's super moist. Um, I probably have a rotting <laughs> alocasia jacqueline there that did not survive the importing. Anyhow. Um, so it's kind of algae ridden. I've used this so many times, but I would just place. So the corm has a pointy part, and that is the top. So, what you want to do is make sure when you put it in the substrate, is that it's sticking up. So, you just leave it like that. Oh. Stay, will you? All right. So I don't know if you can see that it is sticking up and that's it. I'm gonna steal it, seal it away. I put it under a grow light and it's like just cooking in there. And uh, maybe a couple weeks, you're gonna get babies like this. And these are the same corms from the alocasia that I just showed you. This is an alocasia mellow and it, it's so adorable. Like I love the leaf texture of this plant, so. That's how you will grow some alocasias from corms. Well, I'm sorry about the whirling in the back. Um, I'm actually just cooking some smashed potatoes. Um, so I'm actually going to change my um, rooting substrate to frugal, stratum frugal. Fr frugal. Um, it's something new, I think, or maybe it's not new, but I started kind of looking into this um, just to try. It's a different sort of substrate to um, propagate stuff. So I'm gonna try it with these two alocasia corms and I will talk about the substrates in a moment. This is my alocasia, not alocasia, this is my philodendron SP Columbia. As you can see, it's gotten quite big and it's also grown out of its uh, planter. So what I've done is that this is called air layering. Basically, you wrap uh, wet moss, or you can even do soil around the um, aerial roots area, and they will root. This one has rooted. I hope I'm not dripping. You can see one root here, another root here, and a big root going on here. I'll show you um, once I cut this. Um, so basically I did this before I left for my Australia trip and so this is the result of it, which is exactly what I wanted. So yeah, I'm just going to cut this open and I'm going to show you 
I think I'm going to plant this in passive hydro as well. So I'm just gonna unwrap this. Oh wow, there's so many roots already. That's crazy. <laughs> Did not expect it to root that easily to be honest i have a problem or i struggle with rooting philodendrons i just don't know why anyways um so i'm just carefully unraveling the moss when i put this when i transplant this into pond i'm going to be careful and make sure that i don't overfill it with water i'm just gonna slowly transition it um, just because I, I'm really bad with it. Um, I've killed a lot of, I killed my Gloriosum the first time I transplanted it into pond and it was a devastating event. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm going to zoom up so you can see. This is a auxiliary bud. The new growth is going to start if I cut it here. Um, because there is a long internode here, I'm actually going to cut further back. It doesn't have a root, so um, that's okay. But my error layering has gotten this plant rooted in two different segments. So that means I can cut this twice okay so the first cut i'm gonna do is right here i'm gonna do it quickly one two three there i don't know if you guys heard but there has been this um saying that you can hear a ultrasonic sound of your plants screaming when you cut them don't really want to think about it but i feel bad and yeah <laughs> anyways i'm gonna get this cleaned up and then i'm going to let this end callus have you guys ever smelled the smell of a philodendron? Oh, it smells so good. But it's like philodendron blood, blood. <laughs> okay, so now that this plant has been cut, it's a, it is a little unstable, so. Um, I will, I will stick it up. And I wonder if I should just squeeze it into the side here. I don't really want this stick to rot. This plant is probably going to grow out of its pot again. Um, I wonder if I can rotate it. I uh, guess not. Anyways. Uh, be careful with the philodendron um, sap that comes out of the leaf because they do produce a little bit of the toxins that may irritate your skin. So if you touch it, make sure you wash your hands. All right, that's it. All right, so um, this is the one that I have air layered. And so I'm going to dip the cut end into my little rooting concoction here. And then we can get it into, well, we'll let it callus for, A couple of hours or an hour um, make sure when you are letting this callus you have uh, like a wet paper towel over the roots otherwise it'll dry up really fast so just be aware of that and I'll show you what I mean okay so I just have a wet paper towel here I'm just gonna make sure the roots are wrapped and I have the area where I want Callist exposed still. So like this, and then I'm just gonna set it aside. You can wrap it up if you want. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the philodendrons. The crawling kind, um, I did do a cutting of my other SP Columbia as well, and I'll show you how it's doing actually. So this is the plant that I had chopped in a couple of videos back, um, they were uh, rooted and the internode is really long so I actually cut it. So yeah, here is the cut part and here, let me zoom up a little bit, that is the new growth of the new plant baby that's gonna come out. 
so that is the node that has been activated and a new leaf will come out from there. I don't know if there is one that I see here. So it's just going to be a little further back, which I have no problems with. And the new top cutting here is growing nicely. Um, I have a new leaf on its way. So yeah, it's doing well. This is a really tall fiddle leaf fig tree that my brother-in-law's girlfriend brought home. It needs a chopping, so I did this method called notching instead of just cutting this tree in half. Um, notching allows it to air root, and this is what I'm doing, and that just increases its survival. My brother personally just cross sections this tree and then sticks it back into the soil but i don't have that kind of confidence so i did it this way okay so this is my little like cup of um, propagations i'll pull it out and i'll show you what i have i recently transplanted some into their own substrate already so these ones haven't fully rooted so this is a adipoense and biliate cross which is pretty much a black biliate i think um, the back of the leaves are really dark uh, but yeah this plant was just growing out of control it had super long internodes so I didn't really like it I'll show you the mother plant in a bit um, basically I've chopped it I think three times now um, so yeah it's you're gonna chop in between every internode if you want to make multiple cuttings otherwise this one would be a top cut just because a new leaf is here and in between the leaf and the next one that is called an internode um, so yeah uh, the roots are gonna come out of the aerial roots here so pretty much if you are doing water propagation you can just slice it and stick it into water um, no need to callus and so this one is my myoi uh, that I've cut also multiple times I think I stunted the growth of this top leaf here but it's a, it works the same way you're gonna cut. I've cut in between the internodes. So yeah, I hope you guys get the point. And I'm sure some of you who are uh, plant pro experts already already know how to do this. So yeah, um, this is a philodendron micans that I've been trying to root in water. It is absolutely so slow that um, I've kind of given up on that one. However, Charmaine from Unplanned Parenthood, she uh, talked about the double cut method. I'm so thankful that she had um, shared that because it is so hard to root micans. And I've rooted them in plastic bags. Those work too, but the double cut method basically is like this. You would put water at the bottom here and then you just kind of seal it up and make sure it's like super moist and then roots will come. I actually have one root on its way if you can see that see so yeah um this is actually the most recommended way that i would say is effective if you're trying to propagate micans this here is my uh, oh my gosh <laughs> my skin dapsis exotica that i got um it is i'm sure it's very known that oh i just stepped on my snacks um i'm sure it's very known that it will produce runners often and quite long of an internode so like this is something that i would probably chop aggressively um but i didn't i left it while i was in vacation and actually this one here is so long so i looped it up I'm gonna show you how long it is. Like it just grew so much while I was on vacation and I feel bad to cut it. Like, look at this, look at this. Like it's all the way to my couch. So yeah, I just looped it. I'm like, whatever, I'll just leave it. You thrive, you go and thrive. So it's got like super long internode with no leaves and it's annoying. I usually would have cut that already. I'll show you how aggressive I am with, um, the cutting of this plant here. I've been cutting this plant down ever since it's been giving me long internodes. So, I've cut there. You can see the many times that I've cut this poor plant that keeps 
trying to thrive and I'm like, nope. <laughs> like, so many cuttings have been made down this plant, but hey, I want a fuller plant. And I, I think I just don't give it enough sunlight and that's my fault. But yeah, oh, this one is like growing up in a U shape. Yeah, you can see that I've cut it like two times already. Whatever, grow up, grow on yourself and maybe, oh my God, look at this leaf. It's freaking huge. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. I love this plant. This is, this is an awesome plant. I don't know, maybe I should like wind it up too. Maybe, maybe that way it'll grow like really big. Yeah, I'll try that. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that earlier? But yeah, so uh, with this plant, you would cut the same way as how I had cut the pothos. Oh yeah, that looks way better. Why didn't I do that before? <sighs> so neat. Oh yeah, I've I've cut up here too. <laughs> Not a chance. Sorry. <laughs> like I just find it weird. Like the newer growths at the top, they grow quite um, close together, but then the further down it gets, it just like throwing out all these long ass runners so yeah i'm gonna loop this one more time maybe possibly no so at one point it was starting to climb up my wall and it actually damaged my paint i don't know if you can see that little white dot there right there and i yeah i ripped my paint off so <laughs> wasn't too pleased about that but this is pretty much my exotica which i have sliced up many times actually i never put any back at the top so it's doing quite well so yeah same thing you would cut it like a pothos so this is my um black raven uh zz plant zz plants are such an easy plant easy house plant to take care of like honestly you don't need to do anything you water it once in a blue moon and it will thrive for you it can thrive in low light conditions um so this one actually is my newest leaf and so basically how you want to propagate these, you can either leaf propagate or you can stem propagate. Um, so if you're going to take a stem, just cut it and then just put it in water and they'll turn into these balls. Um, they're tubers. They're very similar to, oh, they're like little potatoes. I don't know if you can see that. It's like kind of showing up. Um, yeah, so with the zz plants it's really easy to propagate because um anywhere you cut so the stem or like you take a leaf cutting it will grow a tumor <laughs> tumor <laughs> tuber and then once that forms you can just stick it back into the soil you'll often see a lot of the plant stores have leaves just sticking out of the soil like this and that's pretty much what they're doing is that they're um propagating it and just making it a fuller plant this one here is a begonia. Um, any begonia is pretty easy to propagate. You're gonna cut, so actually there is a, a growth point here, um, but basically if you're going to cut, you see these like kind of like woody markings here, you're just gonna cut in between and then these will do so much better if you water propagate. Um, they are thirsty plants and they will look sad if you cut them. So just get it into water right away. Um, you could use rooting hormone if you want, but they are pretty rooty plants once it gets um, rooted. All right, so the last one I wanna show you, uh, don't mind the leaf because it is very sad. This is my Bessier, a different Bessier that I have. Um, so propagating anthuriums is a little bit more difficult just because their auxiliary buds are kind of tucked away and it's hard to see. Um, but depending on the age, they either form um, or they come out of sheaths or they have their own catafil. So this one, because it is a little bit more mature, it has its own catafil coming in. I actually have a new leaf, so this is the new leaf. My other one died, I was pretty sad about it. Um, so I don't know if I can show you a auxiliary bud here. Anyways, uh, long story short, uh, to propagate this plant, you if you see that you have arrow roots, you can air layer it and then just cut it. 
Um, just because this chonk is a little bit longer, there should be a lot of um, auxiliary buds available. And you should be able to see new growth. I've cut, oh, I think, oh, here. I'll show you the auxiliary buds. Sometimes it's hard to see. Maybe I can zoom up. So these here are aerial roots. This is an auxiliary bud here. And so, yeah, once you say if I were to make a cut, I would either sacrifice maybe this root, probably not, but I would just like maybe cut it this way and then just root it. Um, otherwise, you can air layer it, root this first, and then do the cutting. But it's just hard to cut sometimes because the roots grow out of everywhere. Um, oh, yeah, there's another one here, another like growth here. So that's pretty much it for anthuriums. I'm I don't really have a good example of it, uh, but yeah. So basically, you would propagate by chunk cuttings. I'm gonna go dig around and see if I have a chunk to show you. All right. So I have a chunk. This is a anthurium crystallinum that I tried to propagate, but it actually has root rot. So I'm gonna dig this up. I don't know if it's viable, um, but you can see like the chunk it's still green so it might be able to i have like one good root so it should be able to actually i'm gonna get this cleaned up and then we'll see if we can um just like cross section it okay all right so i cleaned the chunk it actually doesn't look like it has any auxiliary buds um i did have this one growth here so i think it might still be viable i'll just try anyways because it still has like one big root here well not giant but it, it's viable so i'm gonna try to root this in perlite and then we'll see what happens so because this has root um to help the root growth system i'm just gonna sprinkle it with some uh, mycorrhizae inoculant and hopefully it will grow some big juicy roots for me and give it a second chance. This video totally changed and turned into like a, <laughs> a, um, a plant to do. Uh, anyways, so in terms of substrates to propagate your plants, um, you can use perlite, leca, water propagation, akadama, um, pond, uh, sphagnum moss like honestly anything really it depends on your comfort level and what the plant may be like if your plant is very thirsty so like the begonia i would highly recommend if you um, propagate that in water but if you have some hardier plants like pothos um, water would be nice too because their their uh, their leaves do tend to like curl or no sorry no that that is for um, skin dapsis. Skin dapsis, water propagating is great. Pothos, you can do it in moss. Um, I like to do water, water propagations for most of my plants. I find it the easiest, but if they are a little bit fin more finicky, I will do like perlite or something like that. So um, with the anthurium, I'm just gonna do it in perlite just so that I can see the roots a little bit better. Um, also going to put some rooting hormone on this guy yeah um, I think the most oh no is that gonna kill my root I better rinse that down I have never gotten rooting powder on my roots I just washed off on my co but since I have some on here why not um, yeah I've Never really had bad luck with water propagating. Oh no, I did. <laughs> I got a Monstera elbow cutting and it never rooted. I've tried the whole air bubble thing, like for the fish tanks, I've tried that. It didn't work, like it just never rooted and it just kept rotting. So um, with Monsteras, it's a little trickier, but most of the time water rooting for Monstera is not bad. Um, it's just that the aerial roots on that monstera, uh, monstera cutting rotted, so there was like no roots. So I had to like root it somehow. 
Um, yeah, so as you can see, this is a really chunky um, perlite mix that I have. Anyways, I'm just gonna drench it with water. I have a little cutting at the bottom of this cup here, so it'll catch the remaining um, water there. All right, so this is what it looks like. I'm just gonna put it back into my cabinet. I actually forgot that I had air layered um, one of my <laughs> anthuriums. So basically the, let me actually unwrap this and show you. Um, so it's rooted already. I'm gonna wait for it to completely, um, since I have a growth here, I'm gonna wait till that new leaf comes out before I chop this. But basically, the chunk was getting quite long. Let me see if I can show you. Okay, so as you can see, it was really long and it was coming out of the soil. There were a lot of aerial roots and so I decided to just kind of wrap the chunk up with moss to get it rooting. And then once this leaf is um, fully emerged, I'm going to chop it and then I'm going to stick this straight into pond. So yeah that's uh, air layering it's it's a safety net if you are not confident in rooting a chunk like if you just straight up cut it from its mother so yeah i highly recommend this method i actually really like it a lot i don't know why i didn't do it sooner all right so uh, to propagate snake plants it's pretty straightforward i was originally gonna cut some but i decided not to um so for example this is one of the leaf blades what you want to do is just cut a v shape like this and i think that's honestly to preserve the shape of the plant and not have it look funny like a straight cut would just look ugly so um but i think you can do it as a straight cut Anyways, the top part, you're just going to stick it in water and it should start rooting. They're really easy rooters. Um, and with an alternative type of snake plant, this is the whale fin. I never got around to cutting this or separating this, but this was not with the plant when I first got it. Um, with these particular ones, I'd rather just wait until it's grown out like this and just cut it at the root ball when I'm like repotting so this plant. He did not see that. It is so dry in there <laughs> that I'm just not gonna even bother. <laughs> yeah, snake plants are great because they don't really require that much watering and they're really good for um, low light uh, sort of settings, which is why it's in the corner of my house by my door. <laughs> but it's, it's really good. And I really recommend this plant if you're looking for something low maintenance. But yeah, I, I hope that makes sense in terms of how to propagate these plants. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop my philodendron um, SP Columbia before I head out. Uh, this is just like a tomato planter. It's got a little bit of green apples, which is great. Um, I'm just gonna line the bottom with some back there. Well, so it's about like maybe a quarter full. Um, and then I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna pop it in. This is honestly not gonna last long in terms of like how long it can stay in here, but I just want it to root enough so that um, I know it's okay to to um, to plant into a bigger vessel. While I it'll it'll buy me some time to find something that I like. So because it's a crawler, you want the rhizome, which is which is this part here, to stay above the substrate. So I'm just gonna hold it in place. Now I'm gonna fill it. And because this isn't established in rooting, it's gonna be a really wobbly plant. So what you can do is you can put a stake. Oh, I want this submerged. This is gonna like dry up in here. <laughs> ah! This is like abortion. You're gonna abort, self abort. Okay, just, just stay down there, my friend. <laughs> oh my gosh. Actually, it's not bad. Uh, it might still topple over, so I'm just gonna grab a stick. 
Alright, so I'm just gonna know which side I want it to be on. Um, I guess I'll take it from the back here. I'm just gonna tape it. And then I'll strap it with a plant tie. Sometimes I like to cut my ties in half because I find that it's too thick or yeah, so. I'm cheap. I try to preserve these things. <laughs> I'm Asian. Don't judge. Uh, right. so this is just to stop it from topping, toppling over forward so I don't need to make it too tight. So there you have it. Um, I can still see the cutting that I made here on the side. I put it in a way where I can probably start seeing new roots soon and that's the new root. And so I'm just gonna give this a big uh, um, drench. Oh my God, where does this keep coming? Like how? I can actually, I, I might water this with great white, mycorrhizae inoculant um, instead actually. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make that mix and then I'll just drench this um, substrate. Great white is really good um, because it's water soluble. So this is my great white water and I'm just gonna water over this plant. So my planter is a little ghetto, but I have watered this with great white water now. Um, luckily the container is able to keep a little bit of water, um, as you can see. So I'm quite happy with that, otherwise I would have just filled it just past like the bottom mark, um, like right here. And, but it should be good, it should be growing roots like quite rapidly, so hopefully this plant will survive. Oh, and it's out of focus. I forgot to mention one more uh, rooting substrate, and this is the tree fern fiber. I actually have it in a pond and tree fern fiber, uh, just because I want this plant to be in passive hydro. This is my um, Anthurium vitariofolium, which I cannot hold properly. Hold on. Okay, so I repotted this before I left on my trip, uh, maybe back in January, and oh my gosh, look at the roots. <gasps> They're so yummy. They're like spaghetti noodles. Um, so I think tree fern fiber is really good for rooting. Um, you just want to be a little bit careful about it if you're going to do like some water reservoir on the bottom because it can get quite wet, but it is a very, very airy, um, substrate. It does dry up quite quickly, which is why I have a reservoir on the bottom, but your plants will love you for it. They are quite expensive and, but yeah, I would recommend this as well if you are trying to root a chunk. Like I should have put that chunk. Um, that anthurium crystallinum chunk in tree fern fiber rather than perlite but we'll see what happens my friend went on a um, plant buying frenzy and he bought this huge pilia plant i will insert a photo here um yeah and he just ripped one of these out like these pups out from from his plant and gave it to me in the parking lot i'm like uh i don't really need this but thank you so I was like, all right, I'll take care of it. And I put it in tree fern fiber and look at it. It's already rooting. Look at those roots. It's like, it's getting juicy. So yeah, um, tree fern fiber is great. So this next part is all about the different kind of substrates that you can use to propagate your plants. I think it's important to know what kind of permanent substrate you want your plants to end up in later on so that way you can have a better idea of what method of propagation you want to do. For example, water roots cannot go into soil and vice versa just because they would suffocate. So just know if you are planting your plant into soil later on as the permanent substrate, I would pick something like perlite. Or if you're aiming for passive hydro, I'd choose something like leka water or just straight into pond to propagate. Keep in mind once your plant has rooted, you want to wait until it's about 2 inches long before transplanting. So this is water propagation, which is the most popular and I think the easiest to root a plant in. You want to make sure you change out your water every now and then and make sure that it's clear and not murky. 
The second most popular is sphagnum moss. You can pretty much root anything in this substrate. Um, you can also add other amendments like leca, orchid bark, and perlite to just make this a little bit airier. Next up we have perlite. It is made of volcanic glass. It gets quite dusty so it's best if you can pre-rinse it before you use it and also wear a face mask when you're handling this. You can use it to propagate as it can keep in moisture and allow very good aeration at the same time. There are different coarseness levels to perlite. I like the more coarse ones so you can see I have different levels of coarse perlites here. This is also used in my pond and soil. Next we have stratum fluval. This is a newer substrate for me to use. It is also made of volcanic matter which is very rich in nutrients and minerals which stimulates growth for the plants. So currently I am experimenting this substrate with my baby corms from my alocasia. When using this substrate, I didn't rinse it underwater just because I thought rinsing may remove some of the minerals that are in here. So I just did a quick pass over over the sink. Next, we have Lechuza Pond. This is a mineral plant substrate which offers the perfect air water ratio and a stable pH balance when you have your plants in here. For me, I personally added Leca, Perlite, um, Orchid Bark, Orchiata in there so I create an airier mix just because I find that this substrate is a little bit more dense so I just added these things to give it a little bit more of a fluffier mix. I have made a pond video not too long ago so if you'd like to check it out it is in my videos. You can also make your DIY pawn if Lechuza pawn is hard for you to get your hands on. Jing from Plant Happens has a awesome recipe for that so you can check her video out and it should be easy to follow. Next one, I have tree fern fiber, which is also a little bit newer to me. It's incredibly expensive, however, your roots will love you for it. This substrate is really good for moisture thriving plants like orchids and ferns, obviously, and it's really good for retaining air and moisture for the roots. The drawback to this product is actually it dries out really quick, so often I will have a reservoir underneath with a layer of leca. Leca can be used in many ways, including aerating your soil, act as drainage, and wick up excess water. Leca can be used as a permanent growing medium. Its clay balls absorb water and helps improve oxygen flow to your plant roots. The drawback to using this substrate is that you will need to fertilize on the regular just because if you're just adding water, there is no nutrient value to these clay balls. Leca isn't always my go-to when it comes to propagation, but I have used it for rooting my cacti and it's worked really well. On the same topic as rooting your cacti, I actually rooted some cacti in Akadama as well. Akadama is really well draining and it's like a clay. It's quite fragile actually, so you could crush it with your hands. However, they do dry quite quickly, so you would just need to top up the watering. But since they're cacti, it doesn't really require too much watering and attention. I don't use Akadama for anything else other than my cacti. So that is all the substrates and now moving on, I have my rooting powder which is on the left. I have two mycorrhizae inoculants. I have great white which is water soluble and you can just mix it into your water and water your plants. Otherwise, I have dynamico which needs to be sprinkled onto the plant's root system. Also use mycorrhizae inoculants for rooted plants. If your cutting has no roots, you should dip it into a rooting powder to help encourage root growth. Otherwise, if it does, having mycorrhizae inoculants will set you up for plant success and also grow a very healthy and robust root system. So that sums up the end of the video. I know it was a long one. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this. I know it's one hour long. There's no right or wrong way of doing things. It's just finding what works for you. Again, I think the most important part when you're picking what kind of substrates to use to propagate your plants is think about the future. What 
substrate do you want your plants to be in permanently and you should be good to go as always thank you so much for continuing to support my channel for those who are not new and of course those who are first timers here i always welcome you so please if you enjoyed this video smash that like button subscribe comment um, let me know if there are other ways of propagating that you like and um, also other videos that you would like to see and i will talk to you guys soon bye bye